Hi everyone, welcome to PixArt 101, your crash course for PixArt Web. My name is Zach, and today we're gonna to be going over the basic tools for PixArt Web. So let's do it. All right, so the first step that we wanna do here in creating a new project, uh, obviously you can choose from the custom sizes down below for some of the popular platforms, or you can just go up to the new project button, click that, that'll get us into a new screen here. Again, you can see that there are different sizes um, for any of the different platforms. In this case, we wanna do an Instagram story. So we'll click on that preset right there. Now for our next step, we wanna add a photo to this. So we have two options. We can either go to the free to edit library that Pixar already has. In this case, we'll probably wanna search for smoothie since we're doing a smoothie edit today. You can look at some of the photos. We don't like any of those photos too. Luckily we have a backup. I'm gonna go ahead and click the upload button and search in my computer for my smoothie image, click open, and that will upload the photo into the library. As soon as that's ready to go, we will click the photo and it'll add it to the canvas. So our first step here, what we want to do is actually crop the image. I think there's, we want to make the smoothie really the focal point of the canvas. So we'll just crop in a little bit here on each side, take a little bit down off the top. When we're ready, I think that looks good. Move it over a little bit this way, we'll click that. Perfect. So we'll try to center this in our canvas, maybe we'll size it up a little bit by clicking the corners. Cool. All right, so the next step here is actually going up to the top to go to the adjust tool. Over here in the adjust tool, you can see there's a bunch of different options here. You can control the light. So if you wanna brighten the image up a little bit, maybe just darken it slightly, you can see it reacting there on the right. The contrast here will kind of bring out some of the darker colors, give you a little bit of a richer image. I think Mike looks nice. I'm gonna make that smoothie and delicious. Control the amount of shadows here as well. Go a little bit with the highlights. So it's looking very delicious. So once we're good with the adjusting, the next step here is we can actually look for a filter. So click back on the image, go up to the effects button here on the adjust toolbar. Now you can do a lot of different effects. Um, some more apparent than others. Obviously there's like distort, but I think what we wanna do is look for something more of a photo filter. So you can look through a bunch of different options here. You know, there's ones that make it more saturated or even pulling out selective color. But what I think what we wanna do is stick with something like this. Gives it a little bit, brings out those nice colors, gives you a little bit of texture. It looks really nice. So once we're good with the filter here, our next step will actually be adding a background color. And by doing that, we'll just click on the layer over here on the background. You see up at the top, there is a little color dropper. So I'm gonna click that. To pick your background color, you actually have a couple of different ways you can do that. There's the color slider here, which then when you slide to pick the color, you can obviously move this around to see what color you want. Or if you know a specific hex number um, from something else, or a tool I like to use, is the eyedropper tool, which actually just helps when you click in, you can pick an exact color from the actual photo, which I think just makes more of a cohesive design. So once we've picked a color that we like, I think that looks good. The next step here is if we want to, I mean, the photo could be good as is the composition, or we could add a little bit of texture if we wanted to, to kind of match what's in the photo. So to do that, we'd go back to the photos section here on the left menu. I'm um, thinking maybe like a folded paper texture or something to put over the entire composition. So you type that in and search. Let's see, yeah, that one looks good. So just click on the photo that you want. This is gonna put that photo at the top layer of everything. And, and so in a second, we will go and adjust that so you can actually see what's below it. But before then, we will size everything to the canvas. Let's just drag it on all the sides here. All right, we got that in. So the tool that we wanna to use here is actually the blend tool. So the blend tool is basically 
going to see how you can make this photo interact with what's below it on all the other layers. You can select, you know, there's color burn, there's different ways that you want for it to interact. Color burn actually doesn't look that bad, but I think we're gonna go with multiply. Multiply basically makes that image blend into the photos that are below it. So that looks pretty good. Now, I think this is a good option here, but maybe if you want the photo to be a little bit cleaner and not have any of the folded texture that you have before, you can just go back over to the layer section on the right, click that top layer and actually just drag it below the photo so that the background has that folded texture, but maybe the photo is nice and clean. All right, yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so when we're done with our project here, we wanna go up to the export button here on the top right. We've got our file name here. We can click that and change it to Zach's Smoothie. Once we've got the file name down, we can actually look at a bunch of different file types that we have. There's JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, um, even MP4s if, if you wanted to do video, but I think in this case, a JPEG is gonna be fine. So select JPEG. And then from this point here, you can either mess or you can either adjust the file size or upscale it too if you need to make it even bigger or a little bit smaller. I think 1.8 megabits is gonna be fine, or megabytes, sorry, will be fine. I think 1.8 is good. So when we're ready with that, we'll just click download and it'll save two photos. All right, everyone, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Make sure and check out PixArt Web and test out those new skills. See ya.